So our reading this week is from Luke chapter 15, and I'm guessing for good Bible students, <laughs> it puts us in some pretty familiar territory. Hopefully so. Yes, yeah. uh, especially yeah. uh, picking up at verse 11 with the prodigal son, probably yeah. among the very best known parables of Jesus. So, right. so for most people that spend time in the word, Luke 15, uh, of all the chapters, I think is one of the more uh, familiar ones to us. Uh, not hard to structure. No. It has a pretty clear structure going through. <laughs> Three stories. Three stories. That's exactly about something that's lost. Yeah, that's right. And all related because they're all developing this idea of lostness. Uh, you know, lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. And and I think one of the things that's especially important, you know, we often are tend to draw on the story of the prodigal son yeah. and make the story about waywardness. Yeah. And really, that isn't what's going on in Luke 15. No, not if, at all. If you back up to verse number one, you have this incident where Jesus is eating with sinners and he's taking some heat from that. Right. And the three parables are a response yeah. to that criticism. So it's really about answering that criticism. Sure. Uh, not so much about dealing with the wayward, though there's some lessons to be learned. There. Absolutely. And, and along that line, David, I think what's worth noticing in Luke 15, you know, first of all, that feasting, you know, they're upset with the meal he's having. I thought about that. Where we were in Luke 14 last week, the nature of God's ultimate feast, God's eternal banquet. And so here's Jesus enacting a form of that right now, and some folks don't like it still. And so this is actually playing out in real time now in Luke 15. And Jesus is going to tell more stories that are trying to get us to understand exactly what God's up to in in terms of trying to save humans. So so if you tie this back to chapter 14, mm -hmm. and you might want to go back and watch the video about that, we had all that eating at 14. Right. Uh, that, that, that sort of foreshadows this messianic banquet that's right. coming, the gathering of all of, right. of God's people. And so really in 15, you have that same idea present here about who's in and who's out. Right. Uh, because you've got the grumblers up there complaining about who's in. And right. so really, even in the parable of the prodigal son, you right. wind up with the older brother who perceived himself as being one of those who was in. Right. And in reality, because of his spirit, who's standing outside the party. Right. And, and let's, you know, that, you know, for all the familiarity to that, that's a great point that allows us to say, as you read these stories for all their familiarity, ask yourself what you've missed. Familiarity often kind of breeds actually its own form of ignorance. And so, for instance, with the parable of the two lost sons, part of the point that I think we can even see there is both sons were looking at the father the same way, which is what's in it for me. At the end of the story, the older son right. is complaining that he never got stuff to, to have a celebration with his friends. So the younger son wants stuff from dad, just takes it and leaves. But the older son is actually bitter that he doesn't think he got his fair share either. Both sons are looking at the father as a means to their own pleasure and satisfaction, rather than either son recognizing that the father himself is the real treasure and joy. Only the younger son by the end has come to realize that. The older son hasn't yet. So I was listening to a podcast this week because I wanted to challenge myself on this chapter. You know, we... See the new way. Well, it's familiar. Right. And so it's right. easy to sort of slip back into the typical patterns of thinking. And sure. one of the things I thought about that I think is really important is to try to find ourselves in the parable. Right. Because I think our impulse is to find others sure. in the parable. So as the dad of a prodigal, I don't read Luke 15 without thinking about my wayward child. Right. And it's easy to look at the grumblers mm -hmm. and think about how other people are out of step with God. Right. I think more important is to find ourselves here first. Because right. the truth is, we've played all the roles. We've all been the prodigal at some point. We've all lost something at some right. So we're like the man who loses the sheep and the woman who loses the coin. In a sense, we're like God. Right. The challenge, I think, of the parable is to be like God, right. to be like the Father in the right. story, and to have that care and compassion uh, for the wayward that the Father has, because sure. those are the people who will share the messianic banquet. Right. Not the grumblers. They're still standing outside. Right. And to share God's own desire for those people. Right. So that's Luke 15 this week. Maybe look at it with some fresh eyes. Hope we enjoy, hope you enjoy your Bible reading this week.